Well, hey, I guess this is a face reveal. So what's going on, guys? Uh, this video is going to be a bit different than usual. This is a sponsored piece of content, but I'm really impressed with the product. It comes at a low affordable cost. It's actually a piece of software and you can use your own hardware alongside it. What it does is it lets you track your head and eye movement in video games. You've probably heard of this kind of tech before, but this is unique in the sense that it doesn't come at a $300 or $400 cost. It comes at around 30 bucks. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this up for a farming simulator. I'll show you like the, all the settings to fine tune, my best recommendations, all that from just experience and then show you gameplay using it. This is compatible with over 200 games. So don't think that just because I'm playing farming simulator, that means that if you want to play like flight sim, it's not going to work. No, it actually works really well in flight sim. Be My Tracker requires either your phone or a webcam for capturing the input. Now there are two ways to download this software. You can use either the Steam version or the independent standalone one, which is linked in the description. So there are two different pricing options, lifetime or subscription on a monthly basis. Lifetime is going to be $29.99 and the monthly option is $4.99. You can also download a trial on Steam if you just want to check out the software. Besides for the BMI tracker, there's one other thing you'll have to download, which will be completely free. This is very easy to download. Just go to the extensions tab on the website and then click open track PC software. Now, once you install these softwares, open up BMI tracker and it will look something like this. These next two steps are extremely important. On the camera tab, obviously choose your camera. In this case, again, I'm using the Nexi cam. In this video, we won't be using the iOS app because I just found my webcam to work a little bit better. Either way, I wanted to mention, make sure to set your IP address. I've selected my webcam and now we can scroll on down and here is 90% of people's issues if it's not working first try. Make sure your camera placement and camera tilt is set up properly. For camera placement, I'm selecting the top option since it is above my monitor and camera tilt is gonna be negative 20. That's because my webcam is facing down towards me. Then make sure to click save and now we can calibrate this thing. So in the general tab, this is gonna be the most common thing you have to do. There's a shortcut, Alt C by default. Let's click on calibrate and here's what you're gonna see. What you gotta do is look at each dot and click with your mouse. It's very simple, it's really quick to do. Just make sure to do it the best you can. So I'm gonna look dead center, boom. Look at the top corner and you know, you just follow this process until it's done. To check that everything's working properly, you scroll down to eye tracking overlay, enable it, click save and you'll see this circle show up on your screen. Then just look around and make sure it is working properly, which in this case, it's doing a really good job. I'd say 80 to 90% of the time it worked first try, but if it doesn't, just recalibrate and then you should be good to go. Now all we've got to do is open up open track and you're going to be greeted by this lovely looking octopus. I don't know why they use an octopus, but whatever. Now there's only one setting you have to change on this main page, which is the input. So you're going to want to click the drop down and select eyewear beam. Now navigate to the options button and you're going to want to set a center shortcut. You can set shortcuts for a bunch of things. The only one that's actually essential is the center option. So click on bind and then click whatever button or keyboard you want to use. I've also set my centering method to point. I found that to be the most comfortable use case. Now we're done in the shortcuts tab, go to output and I had to invert the yaw and roll, but not the pitch. If you're having any like weird things where you look one way and it goes the other direction, that's probably what your issue is. Now you can check out our other tabs. You likely won't have to do anything in any of them besides for potentially the filter tab. This will be based off preference and that goes with most of the settings moving forward. There is a mapping option and you might find this useful. The max output I've set to 90 and then the roll I did 180. Now you are able to set points by just clicking and move them around. And what this is going to do is adjust how it feels in game, right? So how far you have to look over for whatever movement you want done. So now it's time to activate the products and have them talk to each other. You're going to want to click on the arrow for your tray icon, click be my tracker, and then enable gaming extensions. And then an open track, click start tracking. If you did everything correctly, you will now see the octopus follow your head movement. Now that we've set up all the programs, you just have to open up Farming Simulator and check one final setting. Go to options and then make sure that eye and head tracking is enabled. Click apply and then you should be good to go. So we are now in game. I have my webcam enabled. I also enabled the overlay so you guys can see where my eyes are looking and how the movement all connects. But you'll notice at first you kind of have to use your mouse. I'm like, oh, okay, the eye tracker is not working. No. It actually is working fine. What you got to do is enter into a vehicle. Once you're in the vehicle, you'll notice your head and your eye movement is fully working. 
Now, if you aren't getting the range of motion that you were hoping for, that is likely due to those mapping settings. So just adjust it. Obviously, your head can only track to a certain degree. Same with your eyes. But what I can do is if I keep looking at the edge of the screen, because I set that to 180, I can actually fully look behind in the vehicle. Now, if you feel like your head is in a weird position by default, it's because you have to click the center shortcut. What that does is wherever I'm looking at the moment, that's going to be my new center point. So obviously look kind of in a good spot in your vehicle. I find look slightly down works best. And then everything is pretty good. Now I wanted to show you guys something really cool. If you lean forward, you get way more movement when using eye tracker. I can even turn and if I get right at the correct angle, here's my character. I'm literally looking at my character. That is so funny. Obviously not the most realistic, but it's a pretty neat feature. It, you know, this game's had this capability the entire time. You've just not been able to use it without the right equipment. I wonder like how far we can go. Oh my gosh, I'm like literally in the back seat. Let's get a tractor and I'm going to also disable my webcam. And I've done that so you guys can really experience what it would just be like playing the game. Now I've always found that FS25 has the player sitting a little bit too high in certain vehicles, especially tractors. So what I do is I look up and then I click recenter. And what that does is makes it so when you're looking straight, it actually has the player head facing downwards. And I personally find this to be a much, much better experience. Okay, let's look around. Again, if I keep my eyes looking just to the edge of the screen, I can fully turn. Oh, I love the head movement when going up like hills. Makes it just way more natural. Sorry guys, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Like, like is, this is actually my movements. I'm up, I'm down, I'm left, I'm right, you know, it's... It's just so accurate. I was really surprised. Now, if you're playing the game and you're getting a little bit sick or you are finding it's just not doing the right speed that you want, or maybe your field of views not to your liking, you can adjust a bunch of sliders in Beam Eye Tracker to fine tune all of that stuff. When you hover over them, it will tell you a little description. So head tracking yaw range, adjust the yaw range for head movements, higher value simulates a wider field of view. I like that it kind of tells you the scientific explanation and then it actually tells you what you want to know. Lower values result in smoother camera movements, but introduce a delay. And also, if you only want head tracking, that is an option. I personally did not like that experience one bit, but it's there if you want it. Wait. I just realized the best feature that this has to offer, if I lean and look, oh, that's sick. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. And once again, click the link down below to download this amazing piece of software, Be My Tracker. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.